When visiting the Disney parks, I know you're on a mission to have the best day possible. And knowing some of the pitfalls that you can run into can help to keep your day on track to be as magical as it can. In all of my experiences visiting Epcot, there have definitely been some sneaky things that have popped up and ruined some of my days. And with that, I wanna share with you the top nine ways you can avoid sabotaging your day when at Epcot. The first way you can avoid ruining your day is by ensuring that you get a boarding group for the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind ride. As you may know, the Guardians into the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind ride is one of the newest rides not only at Epcot but at Disney World in general. This may be one thing that you are really looking forward to in your visit to Epcot but there's one thing you really need to know about in order to actually be able to ride the ride. Now currently at the time of this video you do need to have a boarding group in the virtual line system in order to ride on the ride and I see a lot of these families that have no idea what cast members are talking about and they are very caught off guard so the first thing you'll want to do is just recognize that you need to have a boarding group. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Megan, what does this mean? What are you talking about? How do I get this virtual queue in this boarding group? Have no fear. Let's talk through it a little bit so that way you know what to expect whenever you try to get this. Now, in order to go and get the boarding group, you will need to have access to the My Disney Experience app on your mobile device. You can request access to join the queue at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. the day you are visiting Epcot. One thing I highly recommend is if you are traveling with a large party of people or if you have people that you are going with, make sure that you are grouped with them and the friends and family on the My Disney Experience app. And before actually trying to join the queue at 7 a.m. or 1 p.m., make sure that you have the list of people that are going to be riding and joining you all set up. Now that you have your group set up right before 7 a.m. and 1 p.m., keep hitting the refresh button until the request to join queue button pops up. It's important to note that you either have good cellular connection or Wi-Fi connection in order to get this boarding group. Then once you hit that request to join button, it will either give you a boarding group to go back with, or if you find that unfortunately you aren't able to join at 7 a.m., you do have an option at 1 p.m. to try to rejoin the queue. It can be very easy to totally forget about this and completely miss joining the queue at the times that they open up. And you'll want to make sure that you are on exactly at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. because these go very, very quickly and this is nothing to mess around with people. So make sure you get a spot in the virtual queue because that is one way that you can ruin your day, especially if this is something that you are really looking forward to. Running around Epcot can work up quite the appetite throughout your day. And so the second thing you're gonna wanna avoid is eating during the meal rush times. If you're wanting to eat at a quick service restaurant, they can get very packed during peak meal hours. And it can be very hard to find a spot to eat inside of the quick service restaurant. You may get your food, find out you have no place to sit, and then risk having your food get cold. And you spend a lot of money on that food. So you wanna make sure that you're able to eat it as soon as you get it. The thing that I really like to do whenever I eat at Disney World is I like to eat around 11 o'clock or way after noon. Eating around 12 is an absolute no-go for me. It is so packed and crowded during that time because that's when everybody's trying to go and eat. And likewise, around dinner time, I absolutely avoid around five o'clock because that is when it is absolutely packed as well. I was in the Connections Eatery the other day and 11 o'clock looked like a very nice time to go and eat, but as soon as 12 o'clock rolled around, it got absolutely crazy in there. Not only that, but lines get very long to actually go and purchase food. And one thing you definitely will want to do is do the mobile ordering because you can get your food way faster and not have to wait in the long lines that form. So really consider this if you're choosing to eat at a quick service restaurant at Epcot. But there are far other places to eat besides quick service restaurants at Epcot. And thanks to the festivals, there are numerous booths that pop up around the World Showcase, but there's something that you're definitely going to want to do when considering eating that food. The third thing you want to take into consideration is researching festival food before actually purchasing it. A very popular thing to do at Epcot is to eat and drink around the World Showcase during the festivals that happen. And during these festivals, there are a lot of booths that pop up and have different food and drink options available. But there have been times that I have seen guests get very bamboozled and caught off guard whenever it comes to these food and drink options. For one, let's say that the price definitely does not accurately reflect the portion size. These food and drink options can be very, very expensive at times. And after you purchase them and a cast member hands it to you, you could get very disappointed. But before going in and trying something, I definitely recommend doing some research ahead of time and see if it's something that you actually would want to purchase and try. There are posters that are standing outside of the booths around the World Showcase, and it has a list of the menu items on there. And at times there are pictures of some of the offerings that they have. There are also festival guides that you can get at the entrance of the park that list all of the food options that are around 
the world showcase. So you can really start to pick and choose what you maybe want to try. Not only that, but it may not be a bad idea to hang around the booth and see what other guests get. See what the portion size is looking like and maybe even ask them what their opinion on it is. So that way you should know if it's worth getting or not. Speaking of walking around the world showcase, another thing that can really sabotage your day is the fourth thing, not being mindful of your time in the sun. The one thing about the world showcase and really Epcot in general is that there is not a lot of shade around. Unless you hop into a ride, a store, or in one of the pavilions, you really are in direct sunlight the entire time you're walking around the World Showcase. And believe me, I know from experience the other day I was walking around the World Showcase and it was extremely hot during the summertime and it really took it out of me. You may not think too much about it at first, but once you're walking around in indirect sunlight, it can really start to take your energy out of you. And that's a good way to get dehydrated and exhausted. And that's not what you want whenever you're at Epcot because you really want to make sure that you're able to make the most of your day and be in the best mood as possible. A really great thing to do is to take breaks as you're walking around the World Showcase, whether it's going in to explore a pavilion or go on a ride while you're walking around. I really recommend making sure that you're not standing in the sun too long because it can really start to wear on you. And that works out in your favor because the fifth thing you aren't going to want to miss out on is knowing what's offered in each of the different pavilions. There are numerous different pavilions located all around the World Showcase. Each of the pavilions either have a ride, entertainment, shops, or restaurants, all that are ready to be explored by you. And believe me, there have been so many times that I have gone to Epcot, I have completely walked past something that I didn't even know was there. The pavilions are a lot larger than I had expected, and I really recommend going in and at least exploring one of the pavilions in detail. There are different pavilions that are offered in each of the exhibits that are perfect to get you out of the sun, but also explore a little bit more about the culture of the pavilion. And you wouldn't want to get to the end of your day, go on social media and find that there's something that you completely walked right past like I have done numerous times and completely missed out on something that you maybe wanted to experience. So don't be afraid to explore the pavilions in detail and see something that you didn't know was there. One thing that will really ruin your day at Epcot is waiting in too long of lines. And that's the sixth thing here that we are gonna want to avoid. When it comes to attractions at Epcot, there are three attractions that usually have very long wait times during the day. You can almost always count on Frozen Ever After, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and Test Track to be the most popular attractions at Epcot and have the longest wait times throughout the day. Now, what I definitely recommend is taking advantage of rope drop or early entry to go and knock out at least one of these rides early in the day. So that way you don't have to wait in long lines that form during the day for these rides. Instead, a good game plan that you can have whenever it comes to doing rides at Epcot is around the middle of the day, around noon, and then into the late afternoon. Take advantage of some of the less popular rides that are around Epcot. And then if you want to ride Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, Frozen Ever After, or Test Track again, definitely check those out earlier in the day or later on in the day when wait times aren't so bad. It's also good to note that Test Track also has a single riders line that almost never has a line at all. So if you're comfortable splitting up from your party, that's a great way to miss out on the long line for that ride. So consider using this game plan whenever you are at Epcot and trying to do rides. If on your visit to Epcot, you are wanting to see some Disney characters, the seventh thing that can really put a damper on your day is missing out on some characters. The one thing that I absolutely love about Epcot is that there are so many character meet and greets at Epcot that you can find all around the park. But it's really important that you know where these characters are at and what characters you can actually meet whenever you're at Epcot. If you're wanting to figure out what characters you can meet, you can go on the My Disney Experience app and instead of clicking on wait times, you can click on the drop down in the map portion and click on characters and it'll show you where you can find all of the characters at Epcot. Some of these characters are located around the World Showcase, some are in buildings, and you may not see them at first or you may completely walk right by them and miss them. So if there's any character you are particularly wanting to meet, you definitely will want to know ahead of time where they're at and when they'll come out. The eighth thing that you'll want to be on the lookout for here can really be a doozy and potentially end your day right then and there, and that is the orange version of Mission Space. Now if you're watching this and you've been to Epcot before, you probably know where I'm going with this. But there is an attraction at Epcot called Mission Space and it has an orange version and a green version. Essentially the orange version is a simulator type ride that simulates a journey to Mars. And it is very realistic and if you are prone to motion sickness this is not a ride for you. The reason why I say this is because if I did not have Disney friends or know about this attraction going into it I definitely would be caught off guard and I know that other guests probably are as well. I am not particularly prone to motion sickness but I know whenever I get off of that ride my head is definitely dizzy and I am not 
not feeling great afterwards. And especially during the heat of the day in Florida, once you get off that ride, you may not be feeling the best and it can definitely set you into a completely different mindset for the rest of your day. There is a green version that is slightly less intense, but if you have any type of issue with motion sickness, I would just say to skip mission space in general. Trust me, you aren't missing much whenever it comes to it, because riding it can really be a good way to sabotage your day in general. And the ninth thing that you'll want to know is how to leave the park at the end of the day. Now, the thing about Epcot is that it is a very large park. And when it comes to Disney transportation or finding your car at the end of the day, there are certain places that you're going to need to go for this. Now, the Disney buses, the monorail, and the parking lots are all located at the front of Epcot, while the water taxi and the Skyliner are all in the back entrance of Epcot. This is really important to note because if you have an idea of what type of transportation you're going to need to use, it's definitely important that you choose the proper entrance because if not, it can cause you to have to run all around Epcot to try to finally leave at the end of the day. And when you're tired and your kids are tired, that's the last thing you're going to want to do. So make sure that you have an idea of how you're going to leave whenever the park is closing. Not to mention it's absolutely crazy after Harmonious ends and people are trying to get back to their resort or their car. There's so much chaos happening and it can really add to the situation. So just have a game plan and an idea of how you need to leave. Now these are all great ways to avoid sabotaging your day when at Epcot, but this information is probably pointless if you don't actually know what you can do at Epcot. So here are some things that you should definitely know before visiting Epcot. I hope you have the best day visiting Epcot and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.